Hello, this is Stuart Fleming. In our last video, we were working with execute with params, and what we did was place it on the task flow so that it would be quite visible and we'd been able, be able to manipulate um, the information in the task flow. What we're going to do now is um, move this into its own separate task flow. And we could do that by creating another page flow over here and moving the employees and they execute with params in there but why recreate the wheel when we have it there so what we're going to do is take our mouse and do that select both of them and i'm going to extract the task flow now if you haven't saved your work by now um, this would be a very good time to press no because this is irreversible so what we're going to do is call it task flow def definition that's good enough for this little sample and it's going to create a task flow on its own and you can see now that we have the same execute with params the employees and the return back to the departments and you'll see over here that uh, we have the departments sending the same button and the task flow definition now, saving this and then running it, uh, I can tell you quite quickly, it will not work. And the main reason is because we haven't specified a parameter for the task flow definition. The task flow definition is like a black box. You can't get to it. You can't send data to it unless you have, um, unless you copy, somehow you send the data into the parameters. Okay, and we'll be working on that once, um, once I just show you. Quick demo. Okay, here we have the um, department table in the form, and we press edit, and it goes over to oh, no data to display. Well, that's probably because the um, the execute with params has no value in it. So uh, we will cancel that out, and what we're going to do is go over to our button. Uh, that was originally on the departments table, and we're going to go in and copy the um, value that we had in the set property listener because that is the value that we want to set um, in the task flow. And uh, I'll go over, edit, goes over to the button, get the property listener. And here is the value that we're going to take. Go over to the task flow definition. And um, I don't find this particularly intuitive um, because there's a lot of different places that you can put it. Um, let, let's go over this a little bit because first of all, you have a parameter here, but um, at this point, it's not letting me putting anything in here. And these keys over here are not allowing me to press them. Um, and you have parameters uh, do you have parameters there? You don't have parameters here, but you have parameters here. And I press add. I'm going to call this um, depth. I'm going to put input depth ID just to make sure. And um, you can press edit here. And I'm lazy, so just a string. Basically, this is a string uh, since it's coming in as a parameter that will be in the URL. And here we're going to put the page flow scope. Okay. Now that unto itself does not do it. Uh, that, that won't work if we run the page. We actually have to go back to here and click on here. Now you can see that the input depth ID is there. And what is this thing? I'm not exactly sure, but uh, we put the page flow scope there. Now um, let's just um, take that offline and uh, run that again and we'll see. So we have two two things here. One is how to extract um, a couple of a method, an action method and a, a form into its own task flow and then also how to set the parameters on it. And you learn to be very existential when it comes to data developer because it takes a while on occasion to deploy. 
Okay, here we have our form. I'll just press edit, go to 10, and we have 10. We go back, go to the next one, we'll go to 30. That has a lot of records. Edit. And you can see now that we all have department 30s. So let's just review. Okay, first of all, what we did was we cop you know, we took our mouse and we grabbed what was the um, execute with params and the employees view and we converted it into a and I don't see it here it's probably already done and we can do that with this one for example convert it to eh, maybe it's not in here hmm. it is not but um, we converted it to its own task flow okay then we came over here and clicking on the task flow we took the page flow scope parameter that we'd gotten from under the button on the department page, created its own name, gave it a string, and the implode, uh, excuse me, the uh, page flow scope value. And uh, then we came back out again, and here did it again. Now, I, I don't consider that extremely um, intuitive, having to do it twice. But it kind of makes sense. You do it on the outside. Well, you do it on the inside, but then you have to have it do it on the in, on the out, on the outside of the task flow. So um, just keep that in mind when you're doing this, because it, it is not intuitive, and um, it's one of the things you have to wonder why they did it that way. Uh, and I do want to have one quick look at this again because I forgot to mention one thing. When we go over to the next record here. Um, it does not show it. In some cases, you can actually see it in the URL. And um, that might be that we have to set it within the URL. I know that there is a place here, URL invoke, but that's for kind of testing it um, so that we could actually test it from the... Um, we're going to probably ask us for a URL. See if it even works. Yeah, there it goes. We'll do 20. Okay. Um, you can actually see here somewhere. Well, it did go to 20. And as this created, it did write the URL. And I don't see it in here. It may have hidden it. Um, uh, here, here is the input data. Oh, excuse me. Here it is. So we have 20. If we change this to 30, uh, it disappeared quickly. And hopefully I'll find it. There we go. So it does appear in the um, URL. And, and uh, perhaps it did in the first time. Um, it was just too long. So that is how you do a task flow parameter.